The iconic mountain in Zermatt is the famed Matterhorn, a unique peak that has attracted thrill seekers for hundreds of years. This mountain has got a spe special shape. It never exists in, in the whole world. The rock is not solid. It's a very, how do you call this? It's very cr crumbling, crumbling uh, rocks, you know. And that they tried so many times and they couldn't. Actually, it's not the, what we call, the most difficult mountain, but dangerous. The Matterhorn means different things to different people. Well, it's different because the Japanese, wow, well, it's, you know, and even the American, they know more about this mountain, the Americans, than the, the Japanese. But for them, it's, it's some kind of a mystic thing for the Japanese people. So it's totally different, their re reaction. But as it's got the different, uh, total abnormal uh, shape, they think uh, it's, it's got to do something with, I don't know, mythology, I don't know, but it looks like, you know. But everybody has an idea about this mountain, and they're all different. And the Matterhorn's appeal extends to some of history's most famous figures, who have been lured to Zermatt by the majesty of this mountain. When Theodor Roosevelt was in Switzerland, of course he wanted to come to Zermatt as well, because everybody knew it, everybody climbing the Matterhorn were usually British. And he wanted to show the British that even a Yankee can climb. And he did this in 1881. There was a Pope climbing the Matterhorn and climbing the Monte Rosa. And the Pope was, uh, he was then Cardinal. It was Dr. Achille Rati, and he became the Pope Pius XI. Winston Churchill, he came into the Wallace and said, where is the highest mountain? And everybody thought, uh, why doesn't he climb the Matterhorn? He's a mean guy, he doesn't have enough money. Because this is the story. If you wanted to go up to Tüfuhrspitze, the guy did cost you 50 francs, and if you wanted to go up to the Matterhorn, it cost you 100 francs. So they spread the news, he, he actually was, he didn't have any money. But of course, he was at that age, he was uh, 20 years old. One of them was a guide, a native guide, guide of, uh, of this Sermat village, called Ulrich Inderbienen. And Ulrich Inderbienen, he died in 104. He climbed the last time when he was 90, the Matterhorn, and did at 95 still the bright horn. He had no phone, had no television, he had a radio. When you wanted to book him, you had to go in the church square. He was always there in the morning, so you could book him as a guide. Further down the slopes in Zermatt, you can find a special igloo. But in typical Zermatt fashion, it's more than just a pile of snow. All right, so over the cheese fondue lunch, we're talking with Rito, who basically runs the place here on the side of the mountain in Zermatt. Rito, how did you come up with the idea, first of all, to build this igloo on the mountain in the middle of all these runs? Um, first, it was not my idea to build the igloo up here. It was uh, 13 years ago, a ski instructor who wanted to sleep up on the mountain in another part in Switzerland. And he wanted to sleep on the mountain because he wanted to be the first on the slope in the morning. He did not, he did not find a place to stay overnight, so he built his own igloo which was really like this, small. And then his friends came up and said, oh, let's stay up there, let's have a party in your igloo. And that's how he started with the idea of sleeping in an igloo on the mountain. Now, this is a pretty elaborate place. How have you built everything here? Yeah, it's a lot of work. We need uh, a lot of uh, hours to build a place like that. Um, we have big machines, machines from, the, from the mountains. They help us to, to push all the snow together. A lot, of, a lot of it is artificial, it's really hard, compact snow, mm -hmm. and some of it uh, comes during the season. We have, uh, for the igloos, we have uh, balloons, we blow the igloos up with uh, air, and then we have a snow blowing machine, we cover it with snow, take out the air, and then there it is. So how much of it, including some of the little nooks and crannies, is actually hand carved? Um, the, the art is always hand carved and every day we carve, every day it's all hand carved at the end. <laughs> what are some of the most unique features about the igloo? Um, we have some really special things up here. We have, uh, during the night uh, people can, um, can sleep in a, 
in a in a suite which has uh, three different rooms and in one of the rooms there is a, even a jacuzzi where they can stay in a jacuzzi and have a look to the Matterhorn out of the igloo. This is really special. We have um, an ice bar in the hotel. Um, outside here we have many uh, lying chairs and nice small spots. So it's not it's not looking big, but there are always hidden places where you can sit. And something really special that we have this season, and I hope also in the future, is um, live music outside when it's sunny. Mm -hmm. And this winter we have a singing ice bear. Yeah. So and he really rocks the place. What are people most surprised about when they come in here, and what do they like the best? They are surprised about, about all the arts that we have. There are many small things to to find out here, yeah. And then uh, something really special that we have, it's not open at the moment, but we will open it soon, is our big jump. Mm -hmm. So over our entrance, we have a, a big 15 to 20 meter jump, and the, the good locals, they jump over it, and people can sit in the bar and see people jumping all the time. So that's also an attraction. When it comes to finding that genuine mountain sensibility in the southern Swiss Alps, the village of Zermatt is the real deal. There's an old school vibe here that you just don't get at a brand new mega resort, only in a place that's developed organically over hundreds of years. It's a, a small community, close community. People know each other, there are, there are families. We have an authentic village. It's not an artificial resort. We have, an, we have an authentic village that was growing during the last 200 years. And a lot of these old houses, a lot of these old buildings, like ours, um, is still existing and we renovated it. We don't have cars in a resort. It's also very important. So you have, you, we have a big resort but you still have a very mountain village feeling where you will not find anywhere else in a big ski resort. I'm not a big city person, you know, I'm not uh, really, really into that, but I think Zermatt's got everything to offer, really. Atmosphere of very warm, of very um, friendly, because if you go to New York or to Los Angeles, you have a lot of place, wonderful place, but it's all very, um, I don't know the word in English, steril, it's very clean, like, in a, in a clinic. It's really special because everything is coming on one place together. All the nations, all the possibilities, it's all on a really small place all together. Zermatt's inclusive attitude is also very inviting for the celebrity set. Kate Hudson and Goldie Hawn were here a few weeks ago. A lot of Swiss and German celebrities, of course. The King of Spain was here, Richard Branson, the Virgin Boss. Uh, a lot of different people. I remember I was walking down the street and I'd just come from like the whole way down the main street and then uh, and I saw this guy and I thought, no, is that him or not, you know, and I was like, yeah, maybe it is, you know, and, uh, and so yeah, as my youthhood curiosity, I had to go and ask him, you know, and I'm not much of a celebrity stalker, to be honest, and it was, and he was just like kind of wandering up and down the street, you know, waiting for his wife to finish shopping, he said. Robbie Williams comes here a lot on holiday. David Beckham was here over the winter. Um, Thierry Henry, the footballer as well, he was here. So, I mean, you know, there's tons that fly through. A lot of rock stars come here as well. Uh, John Lord from Deep Purple loves it here as well. White Snakes, uh, uh, Queen, Roger Taylor, or David Kilmore, Prince Williams, is Kate Middleton parting down in a rope. And so it's, it's normal. When they are in Sermat, this is the place to party. and they had the time to, to perfect the way of doing this because it takes a long time.